Chalk. He lost the first two runs, 10-8, but we're still trying for the knockout in the third. A very hard man to stop. It's never been knocked out cold. Ainto. Wang can turn on the excitement in a hurry. Does have a win against the champion in a hardship. Just a feeling our process in the opening 25 seconds. Outside leg kick from Wang. Checks the low kick. Three judges circle side are scoring on a 10 point must system. So if you're scoring at home, give the winner of the round 10 points. The loser of the round gets nine points. Jab to right hand there from Wang. High kick, caught on the four arms. Naito looking very well put together tonight. Cutting side kick there, some of these Sander coming into play from Wang Wengfeng. Round kick. Rub. Cannot okay. catch the kicking leg under kickboxing rules in Muay Thai. You can catch and sweep or catch and counter strike, but not in kickboxing. Low kick there from Wang. Low kick from Naito. Wang Wing Funk says he wants to start the first round off kind of slow, just sort of gauging the movement process of Naito, how he's responding to the shots that he's throwing and expecting to turn back up. Looks like it was a low shot Five. there, landed by Naito on Wang Wang Feng. Accidental there from Naito. And Wang Wang Feng will have a recovery period if Three, needed. Five. He doesn't need it though. Two. But he would have had up to three minutes for recovery for the duration of an entire round. Good inside thigh kick there from Naito. Looks for the outside leg. High kick from Wang. Don't forget our main event still to come. Mongol Pet versus Mamudi. Sweeping the inside leg from Naito. Very sharp contest, not a lot of fluidity, but both men throwing heavy now, Rich. Yeah, I like what Mitch said, Wang Wifeng has, does a, he starts off kind of slow, and he's letting Naito kind of pick at the legs here, but I like the way that he's starting to put these combinations together a little bit, and he's, I think he's gonna pick things up in the second round. Both men trading downstairs again. Wang high on the balls of his feet, Naito a little more flat-footed. Step across leg kick, good, coming off the line there from Naito. And you can see the inside of that lead leg of uh, Wong Wimfeng and the outside of the calf of the lead leg, the, the damage that Naito started to do to that leg. Rick. Two. Wong Wimfeng has a slight reach advantage and height advantage, but Naito's kind of neutralizing that by throwing a lot of these leg kicks. Now Wang Wang Feng kind of understands what it's coming with those legs and he's starting to get out the way. You can see how his lower leg's starting to get reddened up there. Good leg kick to the outside thigh there to end the round for Wang Wang Feng. <laughs> Folks, let us know your scorecards wherever you're watching One Championship around the world. Give us a follow at One Championship on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Hard one to call, Rich. Very hard one. Yeah, this, this, this is a very close match so far. I have this one actually even. 10 all first round, unofficially on Rich's scorecard, Dragon. I don't know, I think it was Naito's activity that kind of might have edged the round in his favor, at least off the aggression part, because he is throwing that leg kick, and you're starting to see a little bit of reddening, which counts as superficial damage. So expect Wang Wing Funk to start leveling up, turn up the volume, and uh, really try to put things together. He's got good hand combinations, and he needs to utilize it to close down that distance and not stay at Naito's yeah, kicking yeah. range. There's Rich's unofficial scorecard, 10 all first round. So once again, folks, if you're not familiar with a 10 point must system, given that in our mixed martial arts, we use a global right, rule set where ready? the bounce is judged in its entirety and not round by round. But under one super series, we do judge round by round. Winner gets 10 points, loser of the round gets nine points or less. Fake there from Naito. Good two-punch combination down the tube from Wang Wen Fong. Outside leg from Naito, nicely placed. Then looks for the lead fight. You can see the damage that the ace was talking about on the lead thigh and outside the calf. 
of Wang Wenfeng. Don't forget, folks, Mong Colpet versus Mamouri still to come later tonight. Tries to come over the top with the right hand. See, again, Naito has gone after that leg, and it's slowing down the movement of Wang Wenfeng. He's not being as aggressive as I anticipated, especially with the forward movement. Once Wang Wenfeng gets moving, it's really tough to slow him down. But until he finds that rhythm and that tempo, it's going to be tough for him to do that. And Naito is disrupting that rhythm by constantly throwing those leg kicks. Those leg kicks are allowing him now to start putting leather on Wang Wenfeng's face as well. You've seen him land a couple good jabs and one hook in this round already. Nice combination of the body kick there as well. Naito gloves up high. Wang Wenfeng tries for a straight right cross. Both men in orthodox stance. Left hook, right cross, outside leg kick. Good combination work there from Wang Wenfeng. I like that combination work thrown by Wang Wang Feng as he's able to finish on the third hit. That, that's what he's got to do. He can't just try to trade shots with Naito. Naito's a little bit too fast for him. Because you can see the reaction time of Naito. And if he, he telegraphs these shots by kind of loading up on him, and Naito's showcasing good head movement. Trying to come over the top with that right hand, Wang Wang Feng. Good leg kick again from Naito. It's been the money shot all night for Taiki Naito, who is trying to break into the top five in the kickboxing flyweight division of one Super Series. Steps across to that back leg, and there's the inside thigh again that's redded. It looks like it's been sunburned. Yeah, Michael Naito was very animate about working his way into the top five. He wants to be the first Japanese athlete inside the top five and was just really excited about the potential possibilities inside the top five as far as matchups are concerned. Wang Wen Feng's got that top knot in his hair tonight, which I've never been a big fan of for kickboxers or Muay Thai fighters in that when you've got the longer hair like that and your opponent strikes you to the head, the hair moves and you can really see it as a judge and it gives away a lot of what they're hitting you with. I always do advise kickboxers and Muay Thai fighters to keep their hair shorter rather than longer. Have a look at leg kicks all night long so far, Dragon, especially for NATO. Yeah, Wang Wen Feng was able to land one. When he goes first and he's able to initiate the combination, he lands. But what he's allowing to do is he's allowing Naito to pick and choose his spots. He's not called a sniper for no reason at all. Naito, when he takes aim and fires, he will land. He's extremely accurate and he's showcasing a pretty diverse skill set as far as timing, counter punching, moving out of the way and landing. Third and final round. All right, guys, out, out. Yeah, As the circle door is about to close, can Naito make Back. his way into the top five of a division where Ilias and Ahaji reigns as the champion? Two! Back to the leg straight away for Naito. Inside fire that has been absolutely bludgeoned. Oh, and again, look at the big red wealth on that inside lead leg of Lung Wen Feng. Yeah, it looks like they're in a paintball war, and every <laughs> single Boy. shot is scoring because you can oh. see exactly Boy. where. I don't want to see where the paintball would have landed on that shot, <laughs> but you can see the leg is getting touched up by Naito. So an accidental groin strike there from Naito. And again, there will be the allocation of up to three minutes or the duration of a round if needed. Oh, shot to the six o'clock. If needed there for Wang Wen Feng. If he is unable to resume, an official decision will be given. Which, if it is rich, who are you leaning towards? Uh, definitely leaning towards Naito. He gave the second round clearly to Naito. He is in and out. That damage, that inside lead thigh has been busted up. It's a kaleidoscope. When I see the damage on the inside of that thigh, I, I really feel bad for the one that actually 
landed in the groin here. Maybe it was relief that one landed on the groin. The legs just don't quite work the same after a break. As long as you're staying active and you're moving around, you know, the blood stays flowing and it doesn't really take effect. But once you stop, things start to settle. You start to feel those repercussions. One one Fung able to go on. Just a caution there from Olivier Goss to Naito. There was no malicious intent, though. What a high kick from one one Fung. Naito again goes back to that lead leg inside and outside. Just welting it up. Yeah, for the viewers out there, I tell you, when, when this happens to your leg, you see this, but for the next week and a half to two weeks, Wang Wen Fung is going to have trouble sleeping because that leg is going to be throbbing at night. If you want to get some oh. idea, folks, so, 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 just stand up right now in front of your television and slap yourself really hard to your upper inside thigh and see how much it hurts. Then imagine someone doing that with the force of a baseball bat off of their shin. Outside leg kick, inside leg kick. Oh, big one there to the sciatic from Naito. Timed it perfectly. This is what we said it was going to be. It was going to be the counter striking of Naito against the pressure of Wang Wenfeng. And right now we're seeing just that counter striking play out perfectly for Naito. His timing, and you can just see the speed advantage that he has. But Wang Wenfeng's trying to push forward. I like when he puts some combinations together. Switching here. Wang Wenfeng, side kick. Maybe needs to drop that side kick down onto the top of the lead leg rather than the midsection. Big outside leg kick, cracks that one in Naito, then goes upstairs. I love how Naito is oh. able to just cover right after, right after he throws that kick. And you can see that that last kick that he landed right there really hurt Wang Wing Fung. He's, he's, he switched uh, the southpaw to protect that left leg. Well, after the kick landed, he actually picked the leg up off the ground and gingerly put it back down. Oh, this is just wrecking that left leg. Look, southpaw starts to protect it from Wang Wing Fung. Naito's gone to town on him, absolutely. And Naito didn't change his tactics. He still went after the lead leg. The game plan is very obvious, and that's just attack the lead leg repeatedly. That is just minced meat. That left leg is just minced meat I'm, right I'm up here in the booth grimacing, and I'm, and I'm rubbing my leg myself like I'm feeling these kicks personally. Looks like a Ziploc bag full of hamburger, Michael. <laughs> it's terrible. Your paintball analogy was spot on, Dragon. It really looks like that left leg has been painted red. Final seconds. One when Finn's left leg will be thanking the gods right now that this one is over. Spinning back oh. fist right on the bell there from Taiki Naito. Folks, let us know your thoughts on social media. Do you have it for Naito? Do you have it for Wang Wen Feng? And show some love for Wang Wen Feng's left leg. Just over and over, Naito coming at Wang Wen Feng. Beautiful little high kick fake there to drop into the spinning back fist. Check this out. Fakes the high kick, comes back across with the spinning back fist. That was beautiful. Real life ninja moves. Let's go to Dom Lao now with our decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of battle, we turn now to the judges' scorecards. All three judges have called this contest in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from the Blue Corner, Taiki Naito! We should get plenty of action. what each other has to offer. Who will throw first here? Looking for the inside thigh. You can see Yu Chang Min is trying to draw out a reaction out of Ma Zhao Wen with the feints. He's trying to initiate anything, but Ma Zhao Wen's not having it. Nice little approach into Double underhooks. Let's see what Maja Wen can do from the clinch. Working off the fence here. 
Woo! Beautiful takedown. Trying to take the back is Yoon. Nice control right there from Yoon Chang Min as he goes to the hip toss, puts Ma Jia Wen down. But now, this is the wrestling that Ma Jia Wen can start to lean on. Let's see if he can control here because Yoon Chang Min's trying to pop out the backside, look to get, take control of the back. Catch! Looks like he's got the arm under the neck. I love the way that Yoon Chang Min is using his leg there to trap Ma Jia Wen's arm so that he can't defend the choke. Referee right on top of the action. Tough position. You can see the color in Ma Jia Wen's face start to change right there. So Yoon Chang Min's got a good squeeze. You have a great job by Muhammad Salah. I mean, he was able to keep keep an eye on, That's on tight, Ma Jia Wen's eyes. This one's tight. He's underneath that chin. Oh, this could be over. It is over. What a first round finish for Yoon. My word, Dragon. Looked like it could have been a technical submission. The referee jumped in and stopped it. Ma Jia Wen had a little bit of a protest there, but he was starting to turn some weird shades of red. It may have only been one, but it did look to me like he tapped on his leg, though, at least one time. I will take a look at it again. It is a very quick first round finish for Yun Chang Min. And as Mitch said, the face of Ma Jia Wen was turning a shade of purple, it looked like. Look at this. Yun Chang Min did not have the correct position, but still got the submission. Left arm was under the chin. This was pretty tight. And then Ma Jia went, body went slightly limp right there. He tapped. I thought I saw a tap there. But it looked like the referee stopped Yun Chang Min before the tap, though. Let's get a dumb Lao. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Mohamed Suleiman, has called a stop to this contest after one minute and 46 seconds in the first round. For your winner, by way of rear naked choke, Yoon Chang Min! Choke! Fake early there. Right hand down the center from Will Help. Sagoku outside leg kick. Will Helm the more flat footer of the two. Counterclockwise movement here on the outside from Sagoku. Wilhelm might have five submission finishes on his record, but he says he wants a KO tonight. He's gonna try to bait. Sugoku right into that big right hand. Now he's got that clinch. Let's see what he can do now. Sugoku uses the knees. Nice left hand, followed by the right from the Mongolian. Breaks off, gets some distance. Southpaw versus Orthodox here. Wilhelm ate those two punches. I don't think he was expecting Sugoku to be so fast after the break. Wilhelm's got to get that head moving because Sugoku's got a piston of a right hand, or left hand rather. Wilhelm just telegraphed the left hand he was going to throw. Sogoku, a patient start from the Mongolian. Left hand lead out of that southpaw starts. Yeah, I like the way that Sogoku was just walking that direction there. And he, you know, he lined right up for that left hand. It didn't land, but he's using his footwork real well. Nice knee on the inside from Sogoku. Wilhelm eats shot. these shots, and he's, like, annoyed by the fact that Omar Sana even attempted to hit him. Two nice left round kicks, though, to the midsection from Omar Sana Sogoku. And Wilhelm's got to get that head movement. He's got to stay a little bit lighter on his feet. He's very flat-footed. I think he's just used to running through people, going, getting no opposition. And Omar Sana is going to give him a lot of opposition, and he is tough as nails. The body kick there from Sogoku. Wilhelm drives him back towards the wire. Wrist control here from Sugoku. What's Wilhelm trying to do here, Rich? Wilhelm, Wilhelm is trying to take advantage of Sugoku throwing that kick and then having his body out of position and being able to take the back. And it's almost as if Sugoku is comfortable with his back out of position and, and Wilhelm taking that back. He did a great job with that arm control there. He was able to eventually spin around. 
Hawk left hand there from uh, Sogoku. Resets himself centre circle. Can he press Wilhelm to the outside? Two minutes 20 remaining. Yeah, you can see Sogoku starting to get comfortable there. He kind of threw that, threw that uh, Superman punch and then followed up with the uh, left hook that he had, or the right hook, I should say, the lead hook. Wild round kick there from Wilhelm. Can Sogoku get the knees off? Tries to thread a good uppercut to a left hook. Another left hook from a Sogoku. Oh, some heavy Wilhelm's artillery. Hurt. Wilhelm's hurt here. And this is what I was talking about, about Mongolians. You cannot underestimate their wrestling. He's doing a great job in the clinch. He's, he's framing on the inside, getting inside control with those arms. And that's what's setting up those punches on the inside. He landed that three-piece combination right off the break of the clinch there. Hands are low, though, on Wilhelm. Wilhelm's kind of stopping and taking oh, the head kicks. kicks. Sorry, like, dragging him with the head kick, caught him on the temple. I know you get excited about the Mawashi Gary, Michael, and I'll let you have that. But he's getting kind of just stuck inside the clinch. Like right after Amar Sonic tries to break away, he's just kind of freezing there and he's allowing Amar Sonic to touch him up on the exit. What a first round so far from Amasana Sogoku of Mongolia. Big looping left hand there, but he telegraphed that one. Sogoku is thrown with some bad intentions. Ooh. That's the second time I've seen him throw big and miss. And when that thing connects, it's going to be destructive. Launching the left hand there out of southpaw stance was Wilhelm. Sogoku resets. Circles off counterclockwise. <laughs> Certainly been his contest so far, but don't forget we are scoring as an overall match. All 15 minutes, not round by round. Think of it as a one big 15 minute round with two intermissions in between rounds. Watch the framework that, that Sugoku's doing here. Pushing Wilhelm off, creating that space, and right there he lands that punch, just like he did off the last clinch break. Another short left hand on the getaway there from Sugoku. Counter right hand from Wilhelm. So Goku full of confidence with 15 seconds remaining in the first. Man, Wilhelm has got a chin of iron though because Amar Sana has Didn't touched him repeatedly, especially when Wilhelm drops those hands. He leaves his chin exposed and he's okay to just take punches full on the beard. End of the first round, it was a stellar opening five minutes for Amar Sana Sugoku. Yeah, that is some striking superiority thrown by Amar Sana Sugoku. Look at Wilhelm rushing in there, leaving that chin out. And you can't do that with somebody like Amar Sana. He will put you out if you give him the correct opening. But here he is inside that clinch, framing off the face. And these are the moments that I was talking about. Wilhelm's not being active inside that clinch. He's stopping there, taking pictures, and then things like that happen. Boom, you go up top, he touches you on the head. We showcased it in the open. It's that karate-based striking. That kicks is extremely fast, and Wilhelm needs to find an answer for it, Rich. Yeah, clearly after five minutes in this match, Sugoku was ahead on the scorecard. Obviously in the striking category, he did a great job there. And you, you know, we always talk about the punches landing, but what was really impressing me with Sugoku is his feet are always underneath him whether he's moving forwards or backwards and that's what's enabled him to landing these combinations all right ready ready Two. second round set for three first five minutes was pretty much all amasana sogoku of mongolia pressing with the jab here What has Wilhelm got to try and turn the tide? Overhand right from Sogoku. Good left hand. My word, that was hard. And Wilhelm can take a shot, as Dragon said. What a beard on him. Yeah, man, he's got a chin. He's annoyed by the fact that he's allowing these punches to get through. But I would like to see Wilhelm utilize the jab. Because right now, he's kind of telegraphing things by opening up with these big punches. Oh, again, Wilhelm's hurt from the punches of Sogoku. I don't think that Wilhelm expected this at all, Rich. I don't think he did. I actually think Sogoku needs to check his elbow. It might be hurting from Wilhelm's head there because this guy, <laughs> he, just, he took that elbow on the chin and was like, what? What do you got for me? Wilhelm coming forwards, shoots out the jab. Sogoku's been lighting him up on the feet so far. Have we gone to Ground Dragon? I don't think we have yet, have we? Uh, I think 
Armasan is doing a good job as defending the takedowns, especially when Wilhelm even gets the back, because Wilhelm's used to ragdolling people and taking them down, jumping on their back and choking them out. Now he's starting to experience a little bit of adversity. Let's see how he sort of recollects himself, adjusts the game plan. But now what we're seeing is he's starting to put out the jab. Now he's starting to fake things a little bit. Front kick there from Wilhelm, left it dangling. Counter right hand, that's the right idea. Right hand lead there from Sogoku. Flicking front kick from Wilhelm. Sogoku on the back foot. Can Wilhelm capitalize? Sticks a left on the kisser again, does Sogoku. Wilhelm landed, landed a right hand coming in that time, and he's changed up his footwork a little bit. His, his steps are getting smaller. He's not, he's not making as big of lunges as in this, this round as it's begun. So he's, he's starting to make some, some difference on the feet here. And our main event still to come, Mon Pit versus Mamoudi. Halfway through the second round of three. Good upper gut moving back there. And another one from the Mongolian off the left hand. Shrugs off Wilhelm. Glances towards his corner to Sogoku. <laughs> Wilhelm very flat footed here. Yeah, we talk about we talk about Wilhelm's chin. We've seen some of these punches from Sugoku land. But when you look at Wilhelm, it doesn't even it doesn't even look like he's been punched. Left through a lot of welts under the beard, Rich. We can't tell. But something at this point in time should be showing up on a cheek or a temple or somewhere that's no not cheek covered. To look by at. Hair. It's all covered by hair. <laughs> he's definitely rocking the quarantine beard, but <laughs> even when he when Omar Sana does connect fully, he just seems irritated. He's not really phased by it. So there's definitely no internal damage going on there, and he just marches forward. Oh, Look at that. Beautiful eats done. it. Knee to right cross, drifts back to center circle, bounces on the balls of his feet. It's all flowing for Sogoku so far. Roving with the lead hand, pouring here. You know, Wilhelm came in tremendously confident. Mitch, you spoke to him. Is this going to be a little bit, you know, deflating for him that it's gone this far and that he's been lit up on the feet by Sogoku? I don't know. He doesn't seem to be frustrated. He's not really showing any sort of irritation. He's just walking forward, getting aggravated, <laughs> eating these shots, and then throwing punches back like that. Goku moving. Wilhelm, Wilhelm cannot corner him, cannot close down the movement. Jab from the Mongolian. Jab from the American. Leg kick to a right hand. You know, this karate style that Sugoku has, it's, it's, it's a style, he moves backward really, really well. And it's, it's very difficult to land that blow that just, where they feel the full impact. A lot of these shots that Sugoku's getting hit by from Wilhelm is, it, are, most of them are just glancing. Wilhelm out of Hawaii, which is also the home of our Will Lightweight champion, Christian Lee. No doubt watching on tonight. Two rounds down, one to go. Wow, again, you can't really see it, but Wilhelm is just getting aggressive in there, marching Omar Sonnet down. But look at this. Puts the hands up saying, what you got? Oh, I got him another one. Give it to you again. Omar Sana has a beautiful backpedaling striking style. And this is what we're talking about. Look at that. Inside the clinch, he's got to be a little bit more active. He has to gain some respect from Omar Sana because right now Omar Sana is touching him up. And this is scored as a whole, not round by round. So Ben Wilhelm can still come out. He still carries power. He's still got the aggression. And it does look like he's gassing. So he's still in this matchup. Omar Sana right now is touching him up and showcasing striking superiority. Second your thoughts, Rich Franklin, as we take a look at your unofficial scorecard? Yeah, Sugoku there, he, I think he increased his lead a little bit, obviously. on uh, This is all footwork here. This is all striking superiority. But he increased the lead a little bit, landing the punches. And we saw in that replay, Wilhelm actually took a page out of Rotang's book. Except for typically, Rotang comes back with a counter. Third and final round. 
Once again, folks, the bout is scored in its entirety, not round by round. Scored as a 15-minute single period instead of three individual periods. Jab there from Sogoku. And again, threads it through the defense. Inside leg from Wilhelm. Overhand right from the American. Yeah, Wilhelm, what Wilhelm needs to do because of Sogoku's style and his, his ability to backpedal, and this is the karate style in him, is Wilhelm needs to learn how to cut this, cut this cage off. He needs to cut the circle off and get Sogoku's back on the circle but while he's coming in for these combinations. Knees here from Sogoku and backs him off with the right hand. The nose is bleeding now on Wilhelm. He bleeds. So <laughs> Goku just owning him on the feet. We haven't gone to ground. Willem Helm wants him to stand inside the phone booth, but Sogoku's too clever for that. He's not going to take the bait. You can see how Wilhelm is following him, right? As Rich mentioned, as Sugoku starts to circle out to his right, Ben follows him around rather than cutting the corner, taking an angle off to the left and pinning him there. He's following Sugoku around the circle. He's just kind of running around the track with him. And then when Sugoku stops, that's when Sugoku's firing, entering the clinch and scoring heavily. Yeah, you can, uh, you're, you're absolutely right, Rich. I'll tell you, if you watch the footwork of these two guys and you see these little micro steps that Sugoku is taking, it's just difficult for, for Wilhelm to keep up with him. He's going to have to take bigger motions and bigger motions, and you typically get yourself out of position with stuff like that. <laughs> Wilhelm wants Sugoku to come close to him and stand and trade. Sugoku not doing it. Do you sense some frustration from Wilhelm now? Well, I mean, you can see a little bit of frustration when Omar Sana touches him and then Ben kind of flares his hand out to the side and screams. I think it's he's trying to show aggression and trying to get Omar Sana to psychologically engage with him, but it's tough because Omar Sana knows what he's doing out there. See how Wilhelm's follow him around rather than cutting the angle? That's what he needs to do. He needs to cut that angle, trap him. Here, throw the leg kick when he switches stances. Add some hooks, add some punches. Nice knee, body to head, hand combinations from Sudoku. Has been some better aggression though from Wilhelm over the last minute and a half. I like the way that Wilhelm was cutting, cutting the angles there at first, but I'll tell you what, if I was in his corner, I would tell him to make sure not to engage in the clinch because that's where he's taking multi-punch combinations. Mitch, with Wilhelm coming in undefeated 5-0 with a 100% finishing rate, would it be considered an upset? If Amasana Sogoku beats him tonight, okay, you need to fight. I don't, I don't think it would be considered an upset. Amasana has a Ready? lot of experience. He has a Two. great camp behind him. You know, he's very well rounded. I don't think it would be an uh, necessarily a you know a gigantic upset. But it, you know, the, Wilhelm had a lot of hype coming into him behind him behind this match. What Sogoku has done is he's taken on a Gracie guy who's got 100% finishing rate, all submissions, and has never allowed it to go to ground. Has absolutely owned him on the feet. Wilhelm has not gone to his comfort zone, whereas the ground where he usually has ownership. And meanwhile, Sogoku has fought a perfect fight so far. I'm, in, I'm impressed with Wilhelm at his conditioning here, his chin, his ability, even the body kicks. It, nothing has nothing that he's been hit with. Any of the shots to the head, any of the shots to the body, nothing has slowed his pace down this entire match. No doubt about that. The corner of Wilhelm saying, come on, Ben, let's go. 45 seconds remaining in the contest. Rich, I know you're impressed with Wilhelm's toughness, but I'm impressed with Sugoku striking, man. He's dynamite on the back foot. He's doing good work inside the clinch and doing just everything he needs to score points and not take a lot of time. And that's it, Mitch. I'm impressed with the patience and the execution of Sugoku. He hasn't been wild, hasn't overextended himself, hasn't tried to swing for a knockout on Wilhelm. Everything's been precise. I'll tell you, this is one of those matches that if you're a fan at home watching, record this and go back and watch Sugoku's footwork because that's the most impressive thing in this match. More damage to the face of... Is that nose still bleeding on Wilhelm? Wilhelm barking at Sugoku. Wants him to engage. Final 10 seconds, final flurry! Left hand caught Wilhelm. 
Wow, great sportsmanship at the end there. Sagoku did not want to stand and trade, smartly so. It goes to the judges, Rich. Man, I love the way that Wilhelm was just walking forward there with his hands down, just literally walking him down, chasing him down. Folks, wherever you're watching around the world, let us know on social media. Do you have it for Wilhelm? Do you have it for Sagoku? At one championship on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. You know, just great work inside the clinch. Utilizing that frame perfectly. He's got the overhook on the left side, landing those knees. The minute he gets a little bit of separation, puts two or three punches together. And this is just beautiful counter striking on the back foot. See, as soon as he sees that opening, touches you up. His accuracy is extremely effective when he chooses his weapons to fire. He's accurate, he's fast. Great performance. How will the judges see it? We believe that Sogoku will get the nod here with an exemplary striking performance. Let's go to Dom Lau and find out our winner. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of battle, we turn now to the judges' scorecards. All three judges have called this contest in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from the Blue Corner Marsana to Guke. Height reach goes to Mahmoudi. Got to use it here. Gold pet, as Mitch said, flawless. Hardly ever makes a mistake. Yeah. Early on elbow attempt there from Mahmoudi. Yeah, yeah. Checks the low kick. Yeah, Good like catch and counter from Mongol Pet with power rich. Yeah, you saw me grimace on that leg kick. He did a great job of catching yeah. just like that. Mahmoudi wants to get in the grapple on the inside, work the knees and elbows. Yeah, Mahmoudi can't let those, he cannot allow his leg to be caught like that in those leg kicks because that stuff is going to add up real fast. Absolutely no filling out process at all. Cracks downstairs again, Mongol Pet returns the favor, Mahmoudi. Step through knee, look for the elbow, didn't throw it. Left hook, downward elbow from Mahmoudi, nicely done on the inside, puts on a knee guard and Olivier breaks them. Yeah, Mahmoudi starts incredibly fast in all of his matchups. He's not allowing Monko Pet to jump on him. Any of that forward pressure. Monko Pet expected this. He knows he's going to be counter striking, so he's waiting to time these shots. I like the way he's catching and throwing that leg kick. All that weight is on that leg, and he is laying into it. You typically see Monko Pet start with a slower pace at the beginning of the first round, but he came right out this time and was aggressive from the first Dude. second. Yep. The reason why a lot of the Dude. ties do start slower than the Westerners is because at the Thai stadiums, they're betting on the fights live, ringside. So really the first two rounds, they'll feel each other out, allow as many bets to come in on the fight as possible, and then third, fourth, fifth round, they can start to pick up the pace. Of course, no betting on these fights. Straight into the action, three rounds only. Very yeah. little margin for error in these four rounds gloves. Does not get any more exciting than one Super Series Muay Thai. Monko Pet was true to his words, saying he wanted to chop down that leg of Mahmoudi, and he is going right after it. And you can just see that is shin to thigh as he steps into it. The way that he's digging that shin in, that's going to pay dividends as the match wears on. Uppercut elbow open here for Mahmoudi. Didn't yeah. throw, gets the knees off instead. Look at, you can already see the bruising and the welting starting on, on, well, you can see it on the back of his right, of Mahmoudi's right leg, but you can see it on the front of the left leg too when the camera swings around. Hong Kong Pet, good right hand, found the opening. Counter shot there from Hong Kong Pet. Mahmoudi enjoying the clinch range. Good, yeah. Greg says Olivia Cost. Two. Mahmoudi edges forward, long reaching front kick, body shot to elbow from Mongol Pet. Evades the counter. That was wonderful. What a way to end the first round. I like that slip and rip thrown by Mongol Pet as he catches and then goes right to the body with that straight right hand.
and you can tell that is gonna add up. Look at that, you can see how Mahmoudi tried to jump out of the way of it. Nice little counter on the exchange from Mahmoudi. Oh, look at that. Beautiful left hook, stumbled. Monko pet a little bit as Mahmoudi tried to rush in right there. Rich, how'd you score that one for the folks at home? Yeah, I actually, had, I gave this round to Monko pet. I saw the little stumble there, but I'm looking at the damage on the outside of the Mahmoudi's left leg, and it's starting to change his game plan. So I'm counting that damage higher than I'm counting the damage from Monko pet making that little stumble. Great replay. I didn't think he stumbled that much, but he did catch him. But that superficial damage is going to start to add up. I think that the damage in this is not just superficial. I think it's starting to accumulate. That's why it adds up. That's it. So it's a different damage category. It's called accumulative damage. We have three different damage categories. Two. Second round of three. In nine, Monko Pet on Rick Franklin's unofficial scorecard after one. I like the counters of Monko Pet off that push kick. Mahmoudi might need to rethink that thing because when he catches it, he either goes to the leg with that chop or he goes right to the body with the straight right hand. Good counter there from Monko Pet. Left hand from Monko Pet, then the leg kick. Body ahead from the tie. Yeah, Mahmoudi landed a nice left hook of his own on that. Oh, beautiful dump there from Monko Pet. Just came a little too late, though. I don't know if that was a dump or a suplex. <laughs> oh, the the project was coming loose, so we just threw it off there, Monko Pet, and referee Olivia Cost disposes of it. Chad from Monko Pet, beautifully done again. Nice short elbow off the right arm on the inside from Monko Pet. You may be wondering Good. about Mongol yeah. Pet's entire name. Mongol Pet Pet India Academy oh. is obviously not his surname, but the high fighters do take their last name as their gym name. Therefore, you see Yodson Clive Fairtex from the Fairtex Academy. You see Pet Dan Pet India Academy from Pet India. Those are some Stiff right hands, Michael coming from Monko Pet. He's doing good body work. He attacks everything so well. When we say that he's well-rounded, that means he's strong going forward. He can punch off of the back foot, but he's also good inside the clinch. It's something I do say often, the excellence of execution, and it really does ring true ace for Monko Pet. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised, or I shouldn't say I'm really surprised. Oh, oh dropped him! Wow. With that beautiful right hand, smack Whoa. bang on the kisser. Wow. And Mambudi does a quick Seven. count of his teeth. Eight. He says, I'm OK, Seven. but he got dropped. Seven. Yeah, I was going to say I'm surprised at how many, how many jabs and straight punches that that, Pet, that Mongo Pet is able to put on Mambudi, given the height advantage that Mambudi has. Mongo oh. Pet putting on a show, as he said to you, Dragon, he will. Yeah, he's got three times as much experience as Mahmoudi. Mahmoudi is an incredibly dynamic and explosive striker, but this is just a different class. Look at that straight right hand again to the body. Dude, yeah. Break there from Olivia Ghost. 30 seconds remaining. It's a 10 8 round as it stands so far for Mongo Pet. Oh, wow. oh, oh. You got the first round at 10-9 unofficially on our scorecards, which means in the final round, Mahmoudi's going to have to knock him out. Misses with the right hand. One kick from Monko. Side kick from Mahmoudi, who is cut. It looks like it may be over the right eye. Oh. Great round from Monko Pet Dragon. Yeah, it was impressive, especially with the timing off of that punch to go right down the middle and put Mahmoudi down. There's Mahmoudi finding a nice home for the knee, but left himself open for just a moment. Look at that. Jab, caught the knee, countered it, came right back with a beautiful, look at this timing, off the jab. The knee, boom, comes right down the middle and puts Mahmoudi down. Monko Pet is definitely showcasing a different level to his skill set. This is the Monko Pet that won the Lumpini Stadium Super Featherweight Championship. These are the skills that we expected to see early on in Monko Pet's debut here at One Super Series, but now things are really starting to come together for him. Second out now, please.
10-8, 10-8, second round there, ace, no doubt about it. Yeah, I definitely had that one scored a 10-8. You know, Mahmoudi, after he got knocked down, he got up. I don't know if you remember. He kind of protested to the referee as if that wasn't a knockdown, but in that replay, it was definitive. Third and final round. We believe Mahmoudi's going to knock out Mon Colpet to win it, and certainly opens up strong. Mon Colpet was looking to dump him. Flexing elbow on the inside from Mon Colpet. High knee from Mahmoudi. Good uppercut from Mahmoudi. Stopped him in his tracks momentarily. I think that wobbled Mon Colpet. Overhand elbow, downward elbow, and Mon Colpet dumps him. Dump again there from the tie. Now, this is a very unique clinch style that Monko Pet has. It's rare that you see tie, Muay Thai fighters gripping around the waist. It's typically all the, the collar ties and behind the neck that they're working. I think it's the height, Rich. He's got to really try to reach up and grab the head of Mahmoudi, so he's not able to do that. So what does the technician do? He goes after the body lock and shuts down the forward pressure of Mahmoudi. See? Mahmoudi starts to get off on him, and then Monko Pet ties him up and slows him down, gets the break, and establishes Establishes the distance again. Yeah, this is great adjustment by him because you know grabbing grabbing around those, those collar ties of the head You have to change the entire arm motion on the fly like that. This is great adjustment in this match Body shot from Mongol pick Mahmoudi downward elbow gotta watch the back of the head Downward elbows are perfectly legal trying to break the collarbone top of the nose you can hear the instruction coming from Mahmoudi's corner, and I am sure they're telling him to press forward because you can see the sense of urgency with him just walking Monkle Pet down. And Monkle Pet's eating up time off the clock when he does that, right? So he clinches, and that eats up about five seconds because he knows just how urgent the situation is for Mahmoudi. So every time he gets the clinch, look at that. Five, six, seven seconds tick off. Mahmoudi on the front foot needs to find a knockout of Mongol Pet again. Oh. Mongol Pet ties him up, dumps him. Lovely work. Throws him down. Time. Oh, exactly. Dragon. Exactly. It's great uh, strategic change because he knew the urgency coming from Mahmoudi. Even if Mahmoudi drops him at this point, it might not be enough. He's got to clean Good. finish yeah. him. Mahmoudi cut him with that elbow as he came in there, and you just saw Mongol Pet check his forehead. You see the blood starting to drip out of the hairline. <laughs> Mahmoudi, downward oh. elbow. Not enough, though, to score a knockdown or a cup that might stop the contest. On the front foot again. Three punches and an elbow. Big dump there from Mon Pet. Running down more seconds on the clock. Shakes it. Moves back. Mon Pet knows he's got this one. Won't do anything silly. Too much experience. The excellence and the technique in the opening two rounds from Mon Colpet. Mahmoudi has tried everything here in the third and final, but he will not find that elusive Two. knockout. Here we go, the judges. Folks, let us know your scorecard on social media at One Championship. Great respect between these two men. Yeah, it was. Great first two rounds coming from Mon Colpet. The way that he was mixing things together, the way that he would adjust and transition to new things, scored that big knockdown in the second. But then the third round, Mahmoudi really went after it. But again, we saw the technician, the strategist that is Mon Colpet, utilize the clinch, the body lock, just to eat up time. And when he needed to, he would toss Mahmoudi down, and that would eat up another couple of seconds. Even though Mahmoudi had the urgency, he had the aggression, he was still shut down by Monko Pet. Just in that experience that he's got, it's just too much. Rich, did you give the final round to uh, Mahmoudi? I, I, I gave the final round to Monko Pet. He still All the dumps. Yeah, he still yeah. controlled where the where the match was going. I, I'll, I'll say this: I'm not a fan of that strategy, but that's probably what cost me a couple fights in my life getting knocked out. You know, I'm gonna go to the very end. I'm not gonna. I don't want to cruise out that decision. But smart, smart strategy on Monkle Pet's part there and secured the decision for sure. Fantastic performance from Monkle Pet, particularly getting the knockdown in the second round. The first round was beautiful excellence and execution in the round kicks especially. Mahmoudi did try hard in the third and final but couldn't get the knockout. Okay, let's go down to Dom Lau now in the circle for our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of battle, we turn to the judges' scorecards. The judges have called this contest 
in favor of your winner by majority decision from the Red Corner Mon Culpet and Academy. <laughs>